Thank you, Raoni. Thank you, Jorgen, the organizer of the meeting, for this kind of invitation. And let us go back to logic and metaphysics of quantum mechanics. Okay, uh, my talk will be, we discuss some criticism, recent criticism to the received view of quantum objects. And I would like to share with you some ideas and perhaps to get some feedback to improve the metaphysical discussion. My aim is to make clear that some concepts related to the received view, which I consider misunderstood, and so giving rise to most of the criticisms. I strongly believe that if these concepts are considered in the right way, most of the criticisms will vanish. Let's see if I am right. That is the problem. I will tell you about some criticisms and try to answer them. The received view, it's better to, to recall, say, claims that quantum objects are better understood as non-individuals. And these are entities to which the standard theory of identity does not apply. Well, they are better understood. And the identity, the notion of identity, is understood in the sense of the standard theory of identity, which will, will be, I will be defining later. Well, the first question is, what's a quantum object? It does matter for this kind of discussion. It can be a field excitation, it can be a vibration of a string, it can be a, an irreducible representation of a group, perhaps a collapsed wave function, and something else. It doesn't matter. The important thing is that the received view sees the, 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 the objects of quantum mechanics, the underlying ontology of quantum mechanics, in a certain way. And this way, according to me, is criticized in the wrong places because the, the vision is not well understood. Then, the first thing to make it clear is that the proponents of the receiver review didn't say that quantum objects are non individuals, but just the, that this is a feasible interpretation. They also present an alternative view where these entities are viewed as individuals in the standard sense. For instance, in that book I have with Stephen French, Identity in Physics. Bohmian mechanics would be another case, but I will have this discussion for another opportunity. Most of the criticisms go in the direction of saying that identity cannot be supposed to fail for something and that quantum objects are individuals. Identity would be, would be a necessary notion, not eliminable. The problem is that the critics don't tell us which identity they are considering. They simply assume the intuitive concept that identity is something, a property or a relation, that an object has or partakes just with itself. <clears throat> the same can be said about the notion of an individual. These are vague, imprecise notions. In my opinion, not useful for discussions about foundations, if not made clear. That's my my aim here to make clear certain uh, uh, fundamental concepts. Well, let's speak about identity. Here, identity is understood as the notion formalized by classical logic, which I call the standard theory of identity, STI. We shall see soon the consequences of assuming it. And by an individual, I understand something that has identity in the sense of obeying the standard theory of identity. And fundamentally, an individual can be recognized as such in different contexts. Julius Caesar is an example. Passing the Rubicon, being in love with Cleopatra, fighting Pompeii, etc., was the same man and surely was not Julius Caesar on Mondays and Pompeii on Sundays. Then, that's the fundamental notion of individual. An individual is a one, a something which obeys a certain theory of identity, in the case just explained, obeys the standard theory of identity, and principally, it can be recognized as such in other contexts. Then, third point, the recent view says that expressions like x equals to y are not well defined for certain objects. They are no individuals in this sense, not they, that we cannot speak of them or attribute a cardinal to amount of them, but they cannot be ordered, named, counted, that is, 
put in a bijection with some natural number. That is, it would be meaningless to assert that certain things are equal or different. Soon we shall why? We shall see why. That's the idea there. Identity is a precise sense given by the standard theory of identity of classical logic and classical mathematics. An individual is something which is a one, but fundamentally it can be recognized as being that individual in different contexts. This is an individual. Well, what's the motivation for such a move? Let's take in the classical chemistry, for instance, the combustion of methane in the standard chemistry. We have a, a, a molecule of uh, methane and two molecules of oxygen, giving a molecule of the oxide carbon and two mo water molecules. We have here four oxygen atoms. Two of them go to the dioxide uh, uh, of carbon and two of them to the two molecules of water. But which ones? If they are individuals in the classical sense, recognizable things, we should be able to say which of the four oxygen atoms go to the first molecule and, or, and show us which one of the four uh, oxygen go to the water molecules. Are the H atoms or the O atoms different? No distinction among the O atoms can be given and not even be admitted to, to exist in order to the chemistry can, can uh, go uh, get the, the results. The same for other atoms. This kind of things was uh, verified already by John Dalton in, look, in 808 when he said that the ultimate particles, for him it was the ultimate particles, he, uh, he was speaking about it because he, doesn't, he didn't know about uh, protons and electrons and so on. But the ultimate particles of all homogeneous bodies are perfectly alike in weight, figure, etc. In other, word, in other words, every particle of water is like every other particle of water. Every, every particle of hydrogen is like every other particle of hydrogen, etc. Quantum mechanics just put this, 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 this quotation, this idea, in a very strong sense also concerning the fundamental things, electrons, protons, and so on. Well, another case, uh, perhaps already in the, in the the quantum mechanical description is ionization. For instance, suppose you have a, a helium atom in the neutron state. We have two electrons here. By an amount of energy, we can eliminate one electron, getting a positive uh, ion with just one electron. Then we can absorb an electron again, getting again a neutron atom. The question is, what are the fundamental differences between the two neutron atoms or between the eliminated electron and the absorbed one? The answer is no, no differences at all. They cannot be treated as individuals, as Julius Caesar was, Pompeii, Cleopatra, Cassius, etc. That's the fundamental question. No individuals in this sense. Okay. Then we use logic. Today we, 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 we saw Maria and Valia also speaking about the relations about logic and the world. In my opinion, logic does not apply directly to the world, but to the theoretical construct, I mean representations, we made of a supposed existence partial of reality. I put the, the word the representations in quotation mark because I am not uh, uh, trying to uh, to make a very strong realistic uh, assumption in order to admit the existence of the things being represented. I suspect the judgment. Then I prefer to, to speak about theoretical constructs. That is, logic applies to these things and not directly to the world, or just indirectly. Theories, by the way, cannot be proven to be true. They just save the appearances in some sense. For instance, take Euclidean geometry. Does it apply to the walls of your room? Not at all, for they are not strictly perpendicular nor parallel. There are no perfect right triangles. Euclidean geometry applies to the map you made of a such a territory. We can assume that these representations are given by mathematical structures built in the set theory. 
usually set theoretical structures, and I only call not consider here category theory and other approaches. That is, I see an intermediate case between the supposed existent reality and the theories we have about the reality. We represent these realities usually in an informal theory, a mathematical model, so to say, and then we apply the theory to this model. And indirectly, it refers to reality is an assumption we made. But the application is concerning the mathematical representation of that portion of reality we believe to exist. And this has consequences. We will see some of them. The importance then of the metalogic. So we become committed to the mathematics and the logic we use in the meta level. I provide some example. Toraf Schoeling say, said that the Tarski's notion of truth depend, uh, depends on the set theory used to, to describe it. I read some time ago that the Tarski didn't like such an observation. But let's take quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics needs in the standard formalisms basis for the Hubert spaces. But it depends on the mathematics. Suppose you were using a zermelo frankel set theory with atoms or, or urelemente. There, we can find models where linear spaces don't have a basis, or the linear spaces can have a basis of different cardinalities. How can you build a, a, a quantum mechanics in such a formalism? What's for quantum mechanics in situations like this one? Another example, Solovay model, Solovay's model of set theory, every operator is bounded, but we know that the standard quantum mechanics needs unbounded operators. Then again, what's for quantum mechanics? That is, we need to choose the right mathematics and the right logics in order to map the territory given us by quantum mechanics. And this territory is described, of course, by the physicists. Okay, the map and the territory. That's the problem I see in most of the discussions, uh, uh, in the philosophical discussions about uh, physics and mining quantum mechanics. Physicists, mathematicians, and even philosophers in general take for granted that all the concepts they need are at their disposal in the mathematics they use. Sometimes they create what they need. Fourier analysis, for instance, Newton calculus. But in general, they take for granted that all the things they, they need to, work to express mathematical differential equations, tensor products, and so on, are at their disposal they can use it then without any compromise with consistency with the other assumptions we could uh, make a reference to. But in the case, specific case we are discussing here, we can ask about questions they use informally too, without any description of the details, that uh, are concepts like identity and individual. There is, in my opinion, an apparent confusion between the territory, that is the physical thing, and the map that is the conceptualization or representation in the mathematics. Schrodinger, yesterday, it was recorded this quotation from Schrodinger, uh, he said that we don't have an adequate language to express quantum mechanics. The language we have was brought from classical mechanics and with all the, 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 the problematic things, the commitment with the video, sort of discernible ob objects of our surrounding and so on. For instance, suppose we have two electrons. In order to make a mathematical description of them in this imprecise and not quite useful language, we usually name them electron one and electron two and make them obey standard theory of identity once they become sets or other elements when described in a standard set theory. In this case, these mathematical entities, electron one and electron two, can be always be discerned so by a monadic predicate, E1 of X, X belongs to the unitary set of E1. Just E1 has this property. Then classical standard mathematics, Leibniz law apply, principle of identity between discernibles, and E1 and E2 are indiscernibles. Notwithstanding, the physical electrons in the territory may remain in the cell. Can you see here? That is, we have a difference here between 
the things we have in the territory, the electrons in the laboratory, so to say, in the physical theory, and their mathematical representation. When we represent the electrons in a standard set theory, they become sets or the element. Then they become individuals. That I will prove that. That is, there is a discrepancy between the territory and the place where we draw the map. That's the point. The mathematics. This is the reason the received view demands a different mathematics. The maps we build in the standard mathematics don't fit the quantum territory. For instance, if you are to agree, if you are to agree that all electrons are identical in their properties, identical in the physicist sense, the same is true for all protons, for all neutrons, etc. The physical situation that you differ only by the interchange of identical particles are indistinguishable. That is the permutation uh, uh, symmetry, permutation uh, postulate. That, that is, if you are to assume this kind of things, there are two alternatives. The first one is to change mathematics, which I will propose. The second one, which we do usually, is to restrict the strict discussion to the formal the formable or non-rigid structure. That's what we do when we assume the symmetrical and anti-symmetrical wave functions, for, for instance. We are masking the discernibility of the elements, just putting them behind some kind of shadow. The right uh, uh, things to do, according to me, is to change mathematics and to change logic. Let's see what I speak, uh, what I am speaking about. What are the, are the formal structures? Let A, D, and ROI a relational structure. That is, we have a domain D and some relations. Two, object, two objects, A and B, and D, are indiscernible according to A, if and only if there exists an automorphism H of the structure, such that H of uh, A is equal to B. Uh, automorphisms are isomorphism from the structure to itself. It preserves all the relations and so on. A structure is rigid, that is not deformable, deformable, if and only if the only isomorphism, automorphism is the identity function, called the trivial automorphism. That is, in a rigid structure, an object is indiscernible only from itself, because the only automorphism is the identity function. But there is a theorem about set theory. The universe of sets has no non-trivial automorphism. That is, the universe of sets is rigid. What's the consequence of this kind of things? The, kind of, the consequence is that everything represented in the universe is indiscernible just from itself. You cannot escape that because of theorem from underlying logic. Furthermore, there is a, another quite interesting theorem Every structure can be extended to a rigid structure. That is, suppose you take a, a deformable structure. Inside the structure, objects, different objects from the point of view of the outside, can be seen by us indiscernible. For instance, in the complex field, I and minus I are indiscernible inside the complex field. But they are not, strictly speaking, uh, distinct, uh, indiscernible. They are different. But inside the structure, you cannot see that. But you always can extend a, non, a, a deformable structure in order to get a rigid structure. That is, you always can discern the objects which are behind the shadows. You can dissipate the shadow and to see the difference between two objects if you are working in classical setting, for instance, in classical mathematics. Consequences from the standard structure, indiscernible objects of the structure can be seen as they are, as individuals in the universe, that is, obeying the set, the standard theory of identity. There is no escape because you choose the logic, then you need to accept the consequences. Okay, standard frameworks, I said, there is no escape. With a standard framework, that is Zermelo Franco, for instance, the most used set theory by philosophers, every object is an individual and obeys the standard theory of identity. If you wish to represent quantum indiscernible objects, two options arise. 
first to confine them to the formal the formable non-rigid structures in my opinion a bad choice for foundations or they will not be, the, be uh, for in this case to 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 confine them to uh, the formal structures they will be uh, uh, see inside the structure and discernible but uh, for me according to me is a bad choice because they are not indiscernible at all that's the, the point of view of the metaphysics. It depends on the metaphysics you wish to defend. This is what you'll speak about later. The second alternative is to consider an alternative mathematical framework. According to me, it's the right option. <clears throat> okay. Then there are some criticisms, some specific criticisms about the receivity view. And I have chosen three. First of all, identity is something fundamental and cannot be dispensed with. Second, we cannot quantify over identity of entities without identity. The third one, if a collection has a cardinal greater than one, its elements must be different and some other miscellaneous uh, alternatives. Let us try to answer it. First one, identity is something fundamental and cannot be dispensed with. In two papers with Jonas Arenhart, we have discussed these ideas. The first one, is identity really so fundamental? Answering a paper, quite good paper by Otavio. And the other one, does identity hold up your a priori in the standard quantum mechanics? Well, uh, just to summarize the things, we usually distinguish objects in our scale. It's what we spoke about also yesterday. We tend to see the macro world as a world of distinct objects. According to Toraldo Di Francia, uh, uh, an Italian philosopher I like it very much, a physicist, the, it's a precondition of cognition to distinguish things. But this is another problem. You usually distinguish objects in our scale, but this is just in the formal, informal level. Using this intuitive device, not understanding, we can construct strong mathematical systems where identity doesn't hold in general. Some people say, no, you can't do it because identity cannot be dispensed with. It can. I made it an analogy. We, we know today that there are paraconsistent logics where the principle of contradiction or non-contradiction is violated. But in order to construct such a system, uh, we accept the principle of non-contradiction in the meta level. For instance, Every time an expression of the language is a formula or it's not. Never, but, not, never, in no situation, a certain expression is a formula and is not a formula. Then they were obeying the principle of contradiction in the intuitive meta level. But using this constructive device, you can construct strong systems where the principle of contradiction can be violated in some senses. The same thing holds with identity. Using intuitive identity, distinguishing between A and B and C, etc., we can construct strong systems where identity does not make sense for certain objects. Then we can dispense identity. Of course, we can. Just a, a little propaganda. This idea about the constructive process, uh, if you are interested, we, is described in, in our book, Jonas and, and I, the logical structure, the logical foundation of, of scientific theory. So, have interest, it will be fine to discuss too. Okay, then answers. The second problem is that we cannot quantify over entities without identity. We have answered this question in a we are not well known uh, magazine, which is from Santa Catarina, Principia, and we published a paper named The Quantifiers and the Foundations of a Coincidence Set Theory. We let, there we show that we can quantify two entities without identity. What's the idea? We used the same strategy made by Ebbinghaus, Flum, and Thomas in their book, Mathematical Logic, when they used Zermelo Frank with the choice to show how classical logic, including quantifiers, can be developed both synthetically and semantically. That is, they use the logic to show how the logic works. We did the same. We used the quasi set theory to show how we can quantify things without identity. That is, the existence of a quasi-set theory, which I, I, is the mathematics of the, the received view, I will speak about it uh, soon, 
shows that this supposition that we cannot quantify over things without a data is simply false, simply false. We can because we have a theory which does it. The third point, <clears throat> a set with cardinality greater or equal to two entails that the elements are different. That is, quantifiers presuppose identity. This is another might. Usually, the critics reason as if they were within a theory like Zernello Franco, for instance, and that the theory is all there exists. Furthermore, they are presupposing, since they don't tell us what they are assuming, a kind of substitutional interpretation of the quantifiers. That is, for all x, alpha of x means all substitutional instances of x are true. This presupposes, of course, it lacks a list here, that we can take the objects by their names one by one, and so we need identity. In this sense, they are right. But they can assume an alternative interpretation, fixing a domain D, D of distinguishable things, and saying that for all x, alpha of x in D is true, if and only if for all x in D we have alpha of x, without naming the objects one by one. When we say for all, sorry, we mean for all, and not for this, for that, and for another one. That is, this interpretation truly interprets for all x alpha of x in the sense of the standard sense. It's impossible that there exists something which does not obey alpha. That is, all x in D obeys alpha. It holds for all. I, 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 just a comment. I, I, I wrote that, but I, I cut it because I would like not to compromise a great logician about this. But in 208, I spoke with Iaco Intica about this interpretation of the quantifiers. And Intica, you know, uh, is the, the man of the quantifiers. And he agreed with this interpretation. He said that, yes, you can interpret this way without any problem. Then I had at least the, the argument from the authority to suppose this kind of things. Okay, another remark about the same criticism. If a collection X has a cardinal greater than one, its elements are different. Well, by different, we usually mean in agreement with the standard theory of identity. That is, there is a property which one object has and another one does not. Question now, you mentioned yesterday, yesterday. Take a Bose Einstein condensate. You can write this the following uh, universal quantified sentence. All elements in a Bose Einstein condensate behave as just one big wave. We're not speaking of nameable individuals in an universally quantified sentence. If they obey the standard theory of identity, they have a, one of them has a property not shared by any other of the elements of the back. Which is the property that distinguishes a boson from a collection of them in the same quantum study for any other? Does it exist? Where? How? That is, how can you say that the elements of a back obey the standard theory of identity? It cannot. It's impossible. According to quantum mechanics, at least. Except if you uh, get to a very strong supposition. Okay, let's see Wolfgang Ketterle, who won the Nobel Prize just uh, uh, by working with uh, Bose Einstein condensate. When atoms are cooled to the point where the lambda dB, that is the the, the boy uh, wavelength, is comparable to the interatomic separation, the atomic weight, the packages overlap, and the gas starts to become a, to become a quantum soup of indistinguishable particles. That is, if you are to accept these conclusions in quantum theory, how can you use standard mathematics to describe this kind of things? That's the challenge. We could say that all wave packets, wave packets act in unison without mentioning them one by one and without the possibility of mentioning them one by one. We need a mathematics corresponding to this idea. Hi, Des, you have five minutes. There are other... Okay, I will finish. We have uh, some miscellaneous talks. It's necessary to keep clear which concepts are being criticized. 
I, I, I like much uh, this quotation by Voltaire. If you wish to speak with me, define your terms. I'm trying to define mine. The critics in saying that identity cannot be dispensed with do not specify what notion they are of identity they are considering. When they say that even the discernible quanta are individuals, they don't say what is an individual. Then we can suppose that they are working in a classical theory. Then we need to accept the consequence of this theory. I will not revise the view that the theory is classical. Well, the, one, the, the consequences are the following ones. The universe of sets is rigid. Okay. Everything represented in the universe of a standard set theory obeys identity. In the sustainability can be uh, deal with uh, just only uh, within no rigid structure. That is, it's a tree. Uh, Suppose that the sustainable individuals can be seen uh, as individuals as they are when you leave the structure and you always can leave the structures. That is, in these frameworks, they are just putting the shadows, the elements, the supposed individuals, by the non-rigid structures, hidden, but not, but individuals after all. There, okay, uh, there are uh, some things, because there are a distinction, usually uh, taken uh, as equivalent in, uh, among three concepts, identity, individuality, and individuation. Or I prefer to say isolation. I will just comment about this, about this, this point. Suppose the Melts Priscilla, the, 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 the depositron uh, trapped in a. The Melts said that it, 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 is a, it has identity. I don't believe that. Because Priscilla, as a trapped uh, quanta, was isolated. But it has not identity and it's not an individual because it not, does not respect re-identifiability. If Julius Caesar is on the point, but going to Egypt, we cannot assert anymore that Julius Caesar, that Julius Caesar is the same Julius Caesar. This happens with Priscilla, with the electrons, with quanta and so on. That is, the three things are completely different. Okay? Then I will speak, uh, uh, I would like to speak about quasi sets, the way I see them, just like a quasi set for me is precisely this kind of, thing, of things. That is, is a collection of kinds of things and the cardinalities of these kinds of things. That is, uh, uh, sulfuric acid molecule is something encompassing H, S, N, O, with the cardinals 2, 1, and 4. And the mathematics uh, just to speak about this kind of things and provided a formal account for this idea without the distinction between the hydrogens or the oxygens. That's all. Thank you. Thank you, Basil. It's uh, always wonderful talk on non individuality. So, Otavio is the first one. Please go on, Otavio. Okay, Dacio, thanks a lot for the uh, for the talk. It's always very nice uh, seeing the way you're thinking about those. Um, so I have a couple of uh, of, of questions um, on the traditional uh, picture of individuality of identity. You mentioned two features, right? In fact, you mentioned four. But uh, features three and four, I find them uh, somewhat in tension with one another, right? So um, when you say, for example, uh, that the received EO states that expressions like X is identical to Y are not well formed for certain objects, but then you say uh, they are not individuals in this sense, not that we cannot speak of them or attribute a cardinal to them, right? Uh, so far, so good. But then you say it would be meaningless to assert that certain things are equal or different. Now, if we take seriously that it's meaningless to say that certain things are different or uh, or equal, then there is a clear sense that we cannot speak to th uh, about them, right? Uh, because, Why not? Well, uh, if you if certain thing, if it's meaningless to, to speak about their identity, how can I go ahead and say, but I'll go ahead and keep talking nonetheless, 
right? No, I don't need to speak about them one by one. I can speak of uh, uh, some element of this, this group, some element of all elements of this group, without specifying and speaking about Otavio, I'm speaking about Romney, about Varia, and so on. It's not it's a different interpretation. I can speak, yeah, I can speak. So, I think, for instance, an example I like to do, the, take a, 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 an atom, for instance, a sodium atom. One is 2, 3, and 2s2, two and 2p6, and 3s1. It has one electron in the outer shell, one. You can also use a definite description, the electron in the outer shell. But you cannot eliminate this description by uh, definite descriptions, because you need identity. You cannot say which electron is, but you can speak of it. The outer electron, the electron, in, the only electron in the outer shell. You cannot specify, you cannot name it. But right, you can but speak of it, then, of course. No, that, well, <laughs> we can speak. The question is this. When you grant that it's meaningless uh, to talk about their identity, uh, it seems that you cannot just go back and say, but despite that, um, I can still consider those things and as being different from other things, right? When you say, for example, yes, I'm referring to the electron in the outer shell. Uh, and notice that this ele that electron is not a proton. Um, so when you say yes. that, you are, you're granting the intelligibility of identity talk. So, and that, I agree. That, because you were speaking that the electron is different from a proton. What it, uh, what's the difference between that electron and other electrons in the atom? You don't have any difference because the electron is not fixed there. Right. The electrons yeah. in the shell, if you can make an analogy, is, is are going to every, to changing orbitals and so on every time. They are not things. Okay. Let me ask you They the are, second. so to say, Maximiliano's idea, perhaps they are a concept. Right. I don't know. <laughs> so let me ask you the other one, which is related to the quantification and the point with Rintika that you noted, right? So you're quite right that you have I, I always thank you your questions, and perhaps you could write it to me. <laughs> Sorry about that. Good. Yeah, no, that's fine. And um, so the, the Hintika point was uh, of, um, about, well, you, you're quite right. You can say, look, if I'm saying that I have a collection uh, that in, of electrons, and I'm talking about all of them being electrons, then it would right. follow that there is none of them is not an electron, right? So, and that, that seems fine. Uh, and then you say, well, so I'm talking about all of them. I don't have to be speaking about each one of them. Uh, the trouble is that the interchangeability of all and each is a feature of the universal quantifier. So, Sorry, between all and? Each. Right, because it follows. If, if something mm. holds for all, mm. then it holds for each. If you say no, no, but sure. this is not the case. If we are quantifying no. over non-individuals, no, no, no. This is an I interpretation of the quantifier. Well, it is one that holds for classical, the classical quantifier, right? Do you agree? But this is one interpretation. It's not the only one. To so mean that you... for all, that for each, for this, for this, for this, this is one interpretation. It's not well, the only one. Well, but it is an interpretation that holds for any account of the classical quantifier, right? That inter there is not no account, at least that I'm aware of, for the classical quantifier in which you cannot exchange for all x fx to for each x fx, right? That's a feature of the classical quantifier. If there is not a feature of the quantifier <coughs> over non-individuals, uh, then it looks like we have a different kind of quantification. Of right. Perfect. A different kind of interpretation of the quantifiers. Of course, no, it's no, not no. classic. Yeah, yeah but then, yeah, but then the, the worry is that that quantifier will collapse with the existential quantifier. <laughs> no, right? because, absolutely not. But that, that's a feature that the existential quantifier doesn't have. No, right? no, no, uh, no, 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 no. It does not collapse. Because there exists one, 
you can show uh, you, you mean that you can you can take a quasi set of individuals of the cardinal n 300 for instance you can separate just one of them by the separation schema mm -hmm. just taking one element Although all of them are indiscernible, but you cannot say which one you are picking up. Mm -hmm. You're not picking Otavio or Rauni, you are taking just one of you. Just one. You can do it formally. Then you have the, the sense of the existential quantifier that exists one satisfying such and such and such and properties. But if they are all indiscernible, all of them will also satisfy the property, but you are speaking about just one of them. The, right. the, 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 the axioms provided this kind of, this, uh, of formally of, of theorem. Then uh, uh, perhaps I need to write something more because this question is interesting. How to distinguish between uh, the universal quantifier from the existential quantifier? I thank you for the, the suggestion because this is a right question. Uh, uh, right. I, I see the, 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 the answer, but uh, of course I need to write it in order to be clear to you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, Desi. <laughs> Thank you, Otavio, as always. Christian, yeah. please. I, I think my, my, my place is too dirty. He has a question. I can go after. So, uh, go on, Chitri, please. <laughs> yeah, I cannot avoid asking you the following question. What, what, what would your system very interesting talk. I liked very much. Would your mathematical you. generalization apply to concepts? I don't know. I don't think anybody has tried that. You know. No. no Psychologists no. study. Of course, no. Yeah. But I think so because you can have a concepts in a certain amount, so to, so to say, certain amount of things satisfying a concept. You can provide. So to, perhaps if I'm right. An ontology for the, 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 the formalism of concepts. You have a certain concept to be a lateral. You can hire, you can provide different extensions, so to say, for the same concept or the same intention, if I understood you rightly. Yeah, but I don't think that it was tried what you tried to do. It, nobody nobody no, was trying no, no. that. I, as far as I know, no. No. Psychologists have studied concepts, eh, of course, but they never have asked the question. Uh -huh. What kind of set theory applies here? I don't yeah. think that anybody I ever tried, right. even asked the question. No. And because there is this Why thing. Why not to do it? <laughs> well, you know yeah. the mathematics. You know the mathematics. We could look to go <coughs> to that. Yeah. yeah, sure. Because it will be very interesting. Because your interpretation of uh, about uh, involving concepts is quite, f quite interesting, quite funny. And I think we could work uh, in such a thing with this, this yeah, strange formalism. Yeah, yeah, let us. Thank you. I know, <laughs> I, I, read, I read some of your articles, but of course, you really have to work in the mathematics. I could not, uh, I could not get, get, you work on it a long time already. So you, it's, it's so simple, Didelic. It's so simple, the mathematics. It's so simple, the mathematics. It's so intuitive. Yeah, yeah, but you need, to, you, you, you need to be very careful with every little axiomatic step. I know. I, I worked in similar That's the point, things. Because, uh, uh, yes, you are perfectly right. Because it's 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 quite easy to confound the concepts because identity seems to be a so so intrinsic a, a, a atavistic concept we have that we cannot think and not reason without identity. That yeah, is yeah. a challenge to, to, to put it aside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, need to, you need to do very deep logical thinking, even if you find it simple. You've worked a long time in this now, but, <laughs> but uh, each step you have to be very careful not to make an error, you know. I know that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Thank okay. you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Diderik. Thank you. Thank you. Go on, Chris. Please. Okay, so yeah, connecting what <coughs> connecting the other interpretation and also Massimiliano's, uh, I w because one of the consequences of the of the other Massimiliano's concept interpretation of quantum mechanics is that we have no speciality, right? So, 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 so basically, you you have to detach quantum mechanics from from space, 
because if if uh, if not, you have individuality as a matter of fact, because you would be able to individuate uh, particles, quantum particles, quantum existence, in terms of their position. So, uh, would you claim that quantum mechanics is non-spatial, according to your perspective? This no, no, no. Uh, this is a quite good question, but. but let, let me uh, uh, tell you how I, I see things. We need space and time in order to do physics. It's difficult. Uh, uh, I'll doubt uh, Michael Tachi has tried to, to construct a physics without time and so on. Yeah, we, we, space and time. we need space and time. But the, pros, the problem, according to me, is that the, the quantum space, so to say, would not be uh, Hausdorff to have the Hausdorff property. Because in a, a quant classical space is Hausdorff. What means? If you have two points, two points, yeah. they are distant. You can construct a, 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 an open ball centered in one of them, which is joined with another open ball. They are distinguished strongly by properties. Quantum, in quantum domain, there are not such a kind of things because, according to me, matter is not impenetrable. Then the way the functions, if you think in this way, are spread in all universes, and you cannot see the, the, the strong difference. There are no strictly uh, infinite uh, walls, so to say. You can only, because of the, the quantum phenomena, so, so, you so can only say that the, there are overlapping, and then the space would not be Hausdorff. This is the, okay, but the, so, the, so the so you, you, you're arguing that we would need Another space, because I, I was talking yeah. of, of space time in, in yeah. this case of, uh, with other topological properties, classical physics. Yeah. So in a in a certain sense, it would it wouldn't be spatial in the in the sense that we normally discuss locality in quantum mechanics. Yeah, yeah I would quantum agree. Would, more or less the same as saying non-spatial. I mean, you, yeah. Well. What, what this show means is true. It can be a more general space, a non house for example. Yeah. Perhaps even more general. Yeah, well, of course, when, when we talk about locality, we, we have in mind as physicists uh, a very specific notion of space, right? Yeah. I think usually yeah. when, when we say non speciality, we, we mean non, non three dimensional real space. Yeah, non, like. non classical speciality. Yeah, yeah, that's what we mean. Yeah, 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 that's right. Yeah, yeah, agree. Thanks, Chris.